In her book, From the Corner of the Oval, Beck Dory Stein writes about traveling with President Obama throughout his second term, occasions of negotiation, occasions marking success, and often occasions that were heartbreaking. She recalls the day he was to deliver the eulogy for Reverend Clementa Pinckney, one of the nine people gunned down at the Emanuel AME Church in Charleston, South Carolina in June of 2015. That day was so hard and seeing those families and seeing those two little girls in the mm. front row. And most of the staffers were just huddled in a room because it was like, you can only handle so much. Amazing <laughs> grace. And so then when he broke into Amazing Grace, how sweet. In the moment, it healed kind of this broken heart for mm. all of us. That say that's how the day started and that it ends with us flying back to Washington all of us emotionally exhausted and then we see the White House lit up in rainbow colors this is the craziness of working in the White House where one person does have so much influence where we can then have equal rights celebrated on the same day that we have you know this heartbreaking mm. event in the morning she writes about the magic of working in this world when the clock is ticking. This is Obama's second term. So President Obama always said it's about the work. Mm -hmm. And so even though I was, you know, I was a stenographer, I was like, you have a job to do when you're there. Everyone does. And that was my big takeaway is that moving forward, even if I never have a job with as many glamorous perks as working in the White House and flying on Air Force One, it's really about what am I doing? How am I spending my time? How am I... Um, kind of where am I putting my energy? Mm -hmm. And I really saw that from him. We would fly overnight because he didn't want to waste daylight hours abroad. So we would have like seven hours to, to sleep on a plane and then land in Estonia and have an 18 hour day. That was the precedent he was setting as far as like, we're here to get a mm -hmm. job done. We don't want to waste any time. And so the big takeaway was you just pour your heart and soul into it. On one of her birthdays, her friends arranged for her to ride with the president on Marine One. Marine One's pretty small. There's nowhere to really go. And they were like, oh, he won't even know you're there. You're just going to follow everyone else on. And he will know you're there, but you'll just get to see the helicopter. And I was like, okay. And then I get on, I was like, there's nowhere to hide on a helicopter. <laughs> he gets this very nice window seat and I was on a bench seat. And so I'm basically facing him and he immediately knew it was my birthday. Um, so he starts asking oh. questions. And then the funny thing is, you know, I think at this point we all have a sense of uh, President Obama's humor and um, his dedication and his intelligence. But what you don't necessarily see is just how much of like a dad he is. And so this thing immediately was like, what are you doing for your birthday? Is someone taking you out for your birthday? This is what people don't get to see, is that he's just kind of like edging <laughs> for more information. The lessons learned from the corner of the Oval are lessons she'll hang on to for life. A big one I took away from President Obama is don't let uh, perfect be the enemy of the good. And seeing how he had to operate and often choose between a bad decision and a worse decision, I realize that sometimes, especially with progress on a bigger scale, it's always a matter of like, okay, it's an inch forward, we're getting there. Mm -hmm. And so now that I write full time, <laughs> I keep that in mind all the time where I'm just like, it's an inch forward. That sentence isn't terrible. <laughs> <laughs> Her parents began coming to Maine before they were married, and as a kid, Beck grew up coming here and camping every summer. She now lives full-time in South Portland and is working on her second book. It's called Rock the Boat. It's a novel, and it is due out in June. Interesting conversation, and we're going to have more information about From the Corner of the Oval in the 207 section of our website and mobile app. Quite a perspective, Rob. Yeah, it's pretty remarkable. And I, I love the title because, as she said, there are no corners in the Oval Office. So I love that title, From the Corner of the Oval. Yeah. <laughs>